You're listening to Absolute Radio. I'm Jeff Lloyd. This is my home time show. And would you please welcome, playing live in our staff canteen, the Manic Street Preachers. How do you do? You are, um... You are fast hurtling towards being national treasures. I guess you're already national treasures in Wales, but I think what with the godlike genius at the NME Awards, perhaps now, uh, if, if, those, uh, if those spiky, arrogant young men back in the early 90s could see you, I'm wondering what they would think of you, the elder statesman of rock. We were never arrogant. <laughs> well, you did, you did say, you're no, going to be we the biggest just, band in the world. We were just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think we're still the same people. We've just learned to control our destructive urges in a more constructive way. OK. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the new album, it's a great album, Journey for, Journal for Plague Lovers. Um, it differs from albums you've made for many years, in fact, over a decade, in that it features <laughs> the lyrics of um, Richie Edwards. How long have you had those lyrics? Uh, 14 years, really, pretty much. You know, he left them uh, to us about f- between five and three weeks before he disappeared, so... Um, and in what form did that take? Was it a notebook? Was it loose leaf? It's just a really beautiful binder with lots of paintings and collages. And uh, there's a special edition of the album which has all this kind of stuff in, so it illustrates kind of a piece of art. And uh, as soon as we, uh, James decided that he was, you know, he was starting to write music to these words and we actually looked at him properly, it just made us fall in love with uh, the gift he had as a writer and as an intellect and... I just became a fan of his words again. You know, he pushes us into places that, you know, my lyrics could never do. And is it something you'd looked at much over the years? Is it something you'd, you'd considered before going back to these lyrics? Um, I think, yeah. I, I think between the three of us, we'd now and again get them out of our cupboards or our safes yeah. or our vaults or whatever. Um, and I certainly did, you know. At least once a year, I'd get these, this, this book of lyrics out and look at them. Um, but it took a long, long time to elapse before I actually felt comfortable with actually looking at them as lyrics and with the idea of, t- of putting music to them. Yeah. And uh, the first time I had the feeling where perhaps one day we could actually do it was around about 2005. And then in 2007, I was just going through them, and it, and it was the first time that I just couldn't stop having that ideas when I was looking at the lyrics. Whereas before, I'd been a bit scared of them, or I didn't even know if I connected to them. But yeah. suddenly, at one point in 2007, that just all changed, kind of clicked in my head, I suppose. And if, even though all, all the albums over the years sound like Manic Street Preachers albums, th- this, this one, I think, and I don't know if it's an <clears throat> illusion because it's the lyrics, but it seems to me to, uh, to resemble those early albums. Was there a decision, and I'm kind of like thinking about when Joy Division became New Order, was there a decision uh, back with Everything Must Go that because Richie wasn't in the band anymore that the band should, should take on a different kind of sound? I don't think so, really. I think Everything Must Go... Uh, you know, musically, we uh, we were always guided by James and Sean anyway. You know, me and Richie were more interested in words and makeup and, yeah. you know, hair gel and yeah. hairspray and stuff. So I don't know. I think the, the music would have been what it would have been. I, I think that's just, a, you know, James is the musical dictator right. of the band. Um, <laughs> but I think it was, it was all down to design for life anyway I mean I, yeah. I'm not even sure we would have been in the band if we hadn't written our song we were in for five or six months we were in a pretty precarious place as people um, emotionally in, in every sense we didn't know if we, if we were a band or not um, luckily enough you know James sang me design for life down the, down the phone mm. and said he had his string parts and Ennio Morricone sort of fills and all that and um we just thought well we have a duty to release release this because it's probably one of the best things we've ever done yeah i'm thinking uh, about lyrics and you must have had this as well nicky but with the richie lyrics that I've, I've read stuff where you've said that you never really considered the meanings behind the lyrics you didn't want to get analytical with them and again there's like a joy division thing i've heard new order say they never really analyzed uh, ian curtis's lyrics i think as like young 20-something-year-old lads, uh, maybe it's easy to shut off from that, but do you find going back to these lyrics for this album, you couldn't help but try and read between the lines a little bit? I think James has gone down that route more than me. I find them so um, sort of compacted with references and uh, I kind of think Richie had reached a level of such uh, artistic consumption that I just kind of marvel at his wordplay and I'm... Um, like I said, I, I see it much more as a, a as a fan, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, obviously, I used to sit at the desk and write lyrics with him. Motorcycle emptiness. We used to 
which is quite a rare experience. I can't think of any other bands that actually, usually it's the guitarist and the, you know, the singer yeah. or whatever, but, it, you know, we used to be there. We used to say the pen was our instrument because we couldn't play proper instruments. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're going uh, to play a song from the new album for us. Which one are you going to do first? Uh, well, this, is, uh, this is the first track on, on the new album, uh, and it's called Peeled Apples. That's it for Manic Street Preachers. The more I see, the less I scream. The figure eight inside out is infinity. The naked light bulb is always wrong. They make your brain complete, then they blow it to kingdom. Sounded fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, how's about we give you a cup of tea and some biscuits and then we come back and have another song in a bit? It's Absolute Radio. I'm Jeff Lloyd. This is my hometown show and in session tonight. We're very lucky to have Manic Street Preachers, whose new album, Journal for Plague Lovers, is out uh, next Monday. Um, I read a thing in the paper saying that you were worried that you would alienate. The, the kind of mass audience uh, with, with this record, that you were worried about it being a commercial disaster. Um, <laughs> you seem like, like the last band that would worry, worry about that kind of thing to me, almost to the extent that you would willfully do it. No, I think you know, the one thing is, is kind of... I think, in our minds, this is a little subconscious fear that we had the idea to do this record, but once we had the idea, we didn't feel as if we could stop it. So kind of like it's almost it's almost like a it's almost like a a train you know it's like a, a train approaching you you know for a head-on collision you know once we had the idea we knew that there wasn't going to be any singles yeah. we knew that there wasn't going to be a follow-up to your love alone is not enough with Nina Pearson yeah yeah you know we just knew we had to act on the idea so we're in kind of we're you know the, the idea is in control of us which is quite strange for us usually we're in control of a concept but yeah. with it with it being Richie's lyrics it's kind of in control of us which is quite a strange feeling yeah Richie wasn't writing these lyrics to have hit hit records yeah 
you know. You seem more comfortable with the, the sort of mass audience than you used to be. I remember seeing you uh, supporting Oasis in 1995 at Main Road, or maybe 94, I can't remember which. Yes, and yeah. there was like this strange thing where the, the crowd was singing along with Design for Life <laughs> and they were singing along with, you know, uh, we don't talk about love, we only want to get drunk, as if it was a mantra for life. And, and at the time that felt slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, I saw you at a festival a couple of years ago and you seem to have really become comfortable with people taking your music however they want to take it really yeah i think that you know the oasis gigs it was particularly weird because um basically no one knew everybody thought we were just a new three-piece band with a hit record called yeah, yeah. design for life we went on there thinking they'd know much like leftness and latricess and everyone just didn't have a clue and it's always been that weird dichotomy with a band where the um, you know, well, you go abroad sometimes. Some people think we're a four-piece with Nina Person in the band, you know. <laughs> so we've always, you know, I think the great, what I've always loved bands is their ability to go back through their catalogue yeah. and cherry-pick phases you like and, and all the rest. So I think all the great bands have got that, and I, I think we're getting there now. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting close to that one, cl wonderful catalogue. Getting there after all these years. It's, yeah, it's only taken us 22 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about the, uh, the sort of... Um, political element of your music and because it's there i suppose it goes with the territory that you're going to get asked political questions but with the way you know the world and the the country is now do you th do you think that the 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 old politics is dead do you see much hope or do you feel quite bleak about the way things are i think with us it's always been about putting it in a song i don't think we're um there's a lot of kind of musicians who seem to act politically and you listen to their music and you think well why don't you actually write about it yeah um you know we've always put it you go back to our first album there was one track which we used to li literally get laughed out of town about <laughs> called nat west barclays midlands lloyds yeah. and it was this great line the black horse apocalypse death death sanitized through credit yeah. it's probably the most prophetic thing we've ever written yeah but we were literally laughed out of town by you know we embarrassed ourselves with this at times <laughs> so Ahead i think time. i think we've always i kind of personally i'm not just losing my politics i enjoy politics i still think it gets a lot of things done yeah i think if we were all placed under the scrutiny that politicians were we'd all be out of a job oh god yeah <laughs> <laughs> i really do because we're all corrupt hey also on uh, on politics have you have you made friends with billy bragg now yeah. Because uh, there was the incident with the toilet. That's all behind you now. That was, there was nothing. That was just good fun anyway. Okay. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with one in your own toilet in Glastonbury anyway. I just didn't want other musicians using it. It nothing to do with the public. No, public are fine. Yeah. The musicians, dirty. Yeah, you know, yeah. totally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention names. <laughs> but yeah, no, I have, I've met Billy quite a lot over the last few years. And I mean, we grew up, me and James used to busk Billy Bragg songs in Cardiff. Yeah. Very badly. So uh, you're going to play one of those early uh, Manic songs for us now. You're going to do uh, You Love Us. Aye, yes. Okay, let's hear it again for Manic Street Preachers. <laughs> We're not just sinners. Our voices are for real. We realize we won't be more. We can't abandon you. Death mask uniforms A world of devotion Understand we can never belong Throw some ass into your face Pull your tomato out of where the street needs is Yeah Love Us It's really inherited sin All I'm meant to fake like savor You better wake up and smell the real flavor Your love is like a holocaust Send P.I. problem S.E.S.T. Your love is like a holocaust
Lovely, thank you. When you uh, when you play that, uh, what's your abiding memory from that era of the band? Uh, a couple <laughs> of things. I think it's um, I think um, kind of at the start, uh, Nick and Richie just being in the dressing room and having all their their kit out in yeah. front of the mirrors, all their kind of like you know the powders and the lipsticks and <laughs> yeah. mascaras, and there being no room for my crisps or something like that. <laughs> and then I remember, I think we did um, we did we did a uh, an interview with Snub TV. Which is BBC Two at the time, yeah. I think, wasn't it? And um, before it, Nick Richie convinced me to put a bit of mascara on, <laughs> and I tried it. and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but I looked like um, one of my uncles after they come up from the pit where they still have coal dust left in their, in their eyelashes, and it just didn't work. And they never, they never tried again. That's the one and only time, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for coming in and playing live for us tonight. Um, best of luck with the album uh, Journal for Plague Lovers, thanks, which Jeff. is out on Monday. And uh, and yeah, come back anytime. Yeah. Thanks Cheers. for having us. Cheers, Cheers, thank you.